in this video, I'm going to be talking about my theory about how there's three different John Connors from three different timelines. And that the two movies that we saw were the third timeline. In this video, I'm only going to be talking about the first two movies. So, John number one. He was born somewhere around 95. His timeline and Sarah lives a normal life, uh, gets married, has several kids. And Judgment Day doesn't happen until sometime around 2030. Uh, in line with our current timeline with AI being invented, you know, somewhere in the, the 2020s. So, John's born in 95, has a bunch of siblings. John also probably has a family somewhere in here. And John's uh, siblings also have a family. So there's a whole dynasty of John Connors out there. Judgment Day happens around sometime around 2030. Sometime in the future after that, Skynet loses and in an act of desperation sends a T-800 back in time to kill John's mother. So this is the first time travel event. Back to 1984. Skynet chooses to go after John Connor's mother, Sarah Connor, because the whole Connor family is a problem for them. So the most efficient way to handle it would be to kill the oldest known relative, which would be some Sarah Connor living in LA in 1984. So they send back a T-800. So this is T-800, number one. And the resistance sends back a unknown resistance fighter, number one, to fight off the T-800. So unknown resistance fighter, number one, gets Sarah pregnant here. And here we create John number two. This is the John we see in the future scenes of T2. So in this timeline, T-800 that was sent back, its remains are left intact. Cyberdyne finds them and is able to accelerate Judgment Day substantially to 1997. So now we have a 1997 Judgment Day because of this first T-800 that was sent back. So now we go all the way to 2029 when Skynet is defeated and in an act of desperation wants to send back a Terminator to try and kill John's mother. Now it knows this, Cyberdyne knows that it's going to fail to kill John's mother when it sends it back to 1984, but it chooses to send a T-800 back to 1994 in order to preserve its accelerated timeline and in order to have Judgment Day happen in 1997 the way it happened before. So this unknown resistance fighter gives birth to John number two. So John number two doesn't know that Kyle Reese is gonna be his dad, but he suspects that Kyle Reese is gonna be his dad and also it's impossible for him to send his dad back in time because his dad is from a much different timeline. So in this timeline, Sarah spends most of her days in an insane asylum and John doesn't believe her all the way up until Judgment Day because everything she told him is from this previous timeline that doesn't play out at all the way she says it's going to play out because all our information is different because the future has been changed. So in this timeline, Skynet sends a, a T-800 A second T-800 back to 1984 in order to preserve its 1997 Judgment Day. But in this timeline, uh, Kyle Reese is sent back and becomes John's dad, thus creating John number three. So this John number three is Edward Furlong. That's, that's the John we see in T2. So this is T1 that we know, and this is T2 that we know. So that's why Edward Furlong looks different than the actor that plays John Connor in the future scenes from T2. So this is the T2 
future scene is from this timeline. So now that we have John number three, the information Sarah gets from Kyle Reese is substantially more accurate because it comes from this same 1997 Judgment Day timeline. So Skynet, knowing that this T-800 was doomed to fail from the start, but sent back anyway to preserve its own timeline, decides to send a second Terminator back, which is the T-1000. So this is the Terminator that's meant to actually uh, kill John Connor. And the reason why the first one didn't try to kill John Connor is because they were trying to wipe out his whole family. But now that his whole family, except for a new John Connor, has been wiped out, they only need to attack a single single John Connor. And this is just uh, superfluous because it's there to preserve the timeline. So now this T-1000 fails and Judgment Day fails. So now we get the new timeline that doesn't have a Judgment Day in it. Anyway, that's my theory. What do you think?